Now, I love watching my Ravens play some football, as y'all already know. We have a really good time uh, watching Baltimore go do their thing, win, lose, draw. And it's been a lot more winning than all the other stuff. But um, these games against the Miami Dolphins, these games are just a little bit different for me personally. Um, obviously, being down here in Miami, um, I have a lot of close friends uh, a lot of family that are, are Dolphins fans. Um, so these games, they just, they hit a little bit different. Um, so this game, I, this was a very special game to me. Um, so I had to bring on a very, very special guest, somebody who is near and dear uh, to the channel, um, just to, to, to show how much this game really matters and to really take a deep dive uh, looking at this Dolphins team, their strengths, their weaknesses, uh, what they're going to try to do against the Ravens, and what the Ravens can try to do against them. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. The YouTube team keep it clean. Very, very special guest uh, in the building. Because, uh, of course, we got these Miami Dolphins coming to town this week uh, to take on the Ravens. And, and we all remember, even though this is not a revenge game, because every single season is different. Uh, last year left a sour taste in a lot of Ravens fans' mouths. And a sweet one with the Dolphins, because... Uh, a lot of people use that, and analysts and media as well, they use that as sort of a benchmark game. Oh, how's Lamar going to do against the Blitz? What's going to happen if you Blitz Lamar? But we'll get into all that. But first, let me introduce this very special guest, my guy TD Fence Talk. Appreciate you coming on the channel. And uh, th this should be a fun week. Man. Absolutely, man. Uh, thanks for having me, bro. I appreciate it. And congratulations on all the success you've had and the amazing growth, man. I've been noticing it, and I'm telling you, you're a pioneer, bro. Oh, no, nah, I ain't no pioneer, nothing, man. I'm just, pioneer, uh, baby. No, man, but, uh, <laughs> Give him his flowers, people. Give him his flowers. Nah, I, I appreciate you, though, man, because you, you've you been, uh, I think, since what, 2019. Um, Because yeah. uh, who was it? Oh, I forgot the guy's name who... um. Who got us linked up but yeah man it's it, it been love and respect ever since man so i, I appreciate you big time um That's let great. everybody know before we get into it let everybody know where they can find you at and, and exactly what you do uh on your channel shout out to the two of you <laughs> I see what you did. Um, TD fans talk home of the real Miami Dolphin fans. You know, um, on YouTube, come check me out. Just um, I just keep it a hundred on the show. Um, tell my true opinion. You know, I have my fandom moments, but at the same token, giving true analysis and um, sometimes even around the league. You know, talking about different teams and stuff like that. But um. That's pretty much it, man. Y'all come check me out, especially if you want to actually go on an official Super Bowl run this year. Come check me out. It's the <laughs> Dolphins, baby. Let's go. <laughs> These ain't <laughs> jokes. These ain't jokes. <laughs> and all of his uh, all of his stuff will be down below in the description. So now, um, <laughs> one, one of my favorite topics to, to, to listen to you on um, is Mr. Tua himself. Um, last week... Uh, Y'all took on Bill Belichick, uh, Matt Jones, uh, Matt Judon. Shout out to Matt Judon. But y'all took on those New England Patriots last week, came out with a victory uh, in Miami. And, and that's usually what the Dolphins do with the Patriots in Miami. They've been doing that since the Brady days. But um, how, how was Tua – and just really the offense has a hole in that game. Uh, okay, so um, offense as a hole in the game was very underwhelming. Um, and disappointing to be quite honest with you. You know, at the end of the day, we got the W. As something as a Dolphin fan, you're going to be excited about. But when you go watch the film in the All 22, it's disappointing. We brought in all these weapons. We brought in, you know, o some top tier O linemen in the NFL, um, Tyreek Hill, Cedric Wilson, and we brought some speed at the running back position um, with Mozart and Chase Edmonds. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, Dolphin Nation, we expected to put up 30 points, you know. We expected, you know, the transformation like, okay, we're the Chiefs now, you know. 
Um, but at the end of the day, our offense only put up 13 points. Um, the defense scored a touchdown, so we ended up with 20 points. Oh, yeah. um, we, well, you know, we got some yards in the game. Our quarterback threw for two two eighty, mm-hmm. but at the same token, you know, to put to put up thirteen points, we're gonna have to be better than that. And after watching the film, I know you asked about Tua, man. Um, there was too many opportunities left on the field. We're not talking about tight ones that we need to take shots. We're talking about wide open opportunities that we left mm-hmm. on the field. So. We celebrate the W. We got the win anyway. But after watching the film, it made me feel like the Patriots are a lot worse than people know. Mm. Uh, Because, I mean, we had uh, tons of opportunity. But we also need to be better because we didn't take advantage of those opportunities. So that's Mm. what I got for you, man. Okay. And that's interesting because um, I know with the the Ravens offense, there have been a lot of uh, mixed emotions heading into this season. Uh, based off of how good they can be, um, what their uh, their highest peak can possibly be throughout this season. Um, but we know, like with Lamar Jackson, anything is possible. But with uh, with the Ravens' offense against the Jets, uh, who got some, they got some ballers on that defense, man. Um, mm. And yes. the the Ravens' offense, it started off slow. It started off really mm. slow. Um, but then eventually they they got some stuff going. Uh, obviously with Lamar with the three touchdowns last week. Um, but I, I looked at it as sort of an extension of the preseason for the Ravens because Lamar not only had he not played in any of the preseason, but uh, and he said himself he had he hasn't played football a uh, live game speed football in like nine months. Yeah, because he had yeah. the injury where he missed the last uh, like five six games of the year, um, and none of the, none of the starters really played. Uh, in the preseason for the Ravens. Um, so I wonder if, if, if it is a concern uh, for the Dolphins about the offense. And it, it's it's still early. It's still super early. It, it was one week. So I don't want to uh, overreact to, to either team's offense starting out sluggish. Um, hopefully for this week, uh, last week's offense for the Dolphins is a sign of things to come. Um, mm-hmm. and, and Ravens offense last week was just like an anomaly. And it was like, all right, we're we a little bit slow right now. But – Somebody that I'm gonna be straight up. I was jealous when it happened. Um, because I'm like, <laughs> man, like they go out and get that dude for two. Like, what but anyway, Tyreek Hill. Mm. How how was Tyreek Hill in that game specifically? Well, it, well, there's two ways to look at it. Um Bill Belichick did a good job. He made sure that Tyreek could never take advantage of him over the top. Mm. So what he basically did is said, go ahead and get all the short stuff you want. So that's what we did. You know, um, I think he had eight or nine catches for 94 yards. Um, I think eight catches or something like that for 94 yards. So um, he was very productive in the game. But like I said earlier, we left so much on the field. You know, you got 15 and 20 20 yard posts and and corner routes that are wide open that the ball never is on the way with a clean pocket. So um, I think he could have had an even more monstrous game, but we got to be better at the quarterback position delivering the ball to these open receivers. And Tyreek showed a little frustration at times on the field um, because of moments where he was open. Um, So Tyreek is everything he's advertised to be. You know, he doesn't slow down on the field. He's just dangerous as all can be. And he makes life easier for the quarterback. But the quarterback got to take advantage of those opportunities. Um, He's going to be a problem for the Ravens, I believe, um, as well. Just depending on how y'all play, because I know you just lost somebody in your secondary um, mm-hmm. as well, if I'm not mistaken. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Ravens defense, um, what they're going to deploy against us, because I'm actually going to be watching some film on you guys today against the Jets, just to get a good look at it on the channel with, um, with everybody. But, um, Tyreek is everything you want in a receiver. I just, I just feel like we paid $30 million. When you pay $30 million, you want to be able to utilize all $30 million. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're only going to be able to get $20 million worth because of the quarterback situation. Mm. Oh, that's powerful right there. Now, I remember um, last year when the, uh, when the Ravens <laughs> played the, the Chiefs, uh, it was a lot of the same stuff. They, they were not let, letting Tyreek get any of the deep stuff. Uh, they were keeping it short, short and simple. Mm-hmm. Um, and it worked. It was effective. Uh, they pretty much took him out of the game. Uh, he wasn't mm. as nearly as impactful as he 
had been uh, in previous games against the Ravens. Oof, it's big yikes. But anyway, um, I uh, I like Marvel stuff. I, I like uh, Avengers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably my favorite character from um, from Marvel is uh, is Thor. Even though I didn't like that last movie, I just uh, I didn't think oh. it was <laughs> uh, Love and Thunder. But um, so I never really been a uh, a DC guy. Never really been into Batman like that. Superman. I know they got uh, Bla- I know they got Black Adam coming out soon with The Rock. Um, but with Batman, one of his uh his enemies is uh the Penguin. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you <laughs> think about penguins, one of their biggest moves that they do, the way that they walk or the way that they sort of waddle. How was he last week? I, I did see him break that long tag, and he still he, he start doing his little waddle and whatnot. But we don't want to see any of that this week. But how was Jalen Waddle uh, against those Patriots? He had less yards than Tyreek, but he did put the touchdown on the board. I thought I think you saw that slant and he that burst he put where he just jumped out of the triple coverage and took off down the field for the touchdown. Mm-hmm. Um, waddle is a beast. Mm. Waddle is a piece, bro. I, I just gotta keep it a hundred. This kid, like, it's blasphemy for for me to say something like Waddle's better than Tyreek, right? But I am telling you, he's the next guy that's gonna be revered like him. He's gonna be mentioned like him because I think he's gonna eat regardless of having Tyreek on the field. Um, but again, I think that we also tried to force feed Tyreek so much that we neglected Waddle. Mm. And then when we finally started to go to Waddle, he was eating. But again, once again, he was the most open receiver on the field after I did my film study. For the deep ball, the 25-yard middle of the field, wide open, safety, 15 yards back, linebackers, 10 yards forward, just sitting there wide open coming across, and we never hit him. I mean, that should have been a game where he had 150 yards and two touchdowns, man. But again, when you leave meat on the bones, um, that's why I'm excited about this game, believe it or not, um, because we all know Belichick is going to deploy a great defense. But that secondary ain't nearly as close as what he's used to having with, you know, all the McCourties and um, J.C. Jackson, you know, all, all the guys that he usually has on that back end. Right. That's why I'm excited about this game. It's going to tell us a lot about these guys. Um, but the one thing that um, concerns me with these receivers, since they are smaller, mm-hmm. is any team that utilizes their linebackers. You know how when you play zone coverage and the receiver, the slot receiver is going to run past your outside linebacker? Okay. One thing that seemed a little effective at times is every time a receiver ran past, that linebacker gave him the push of his life. To throw him off of it. Yeah, I mean, no, push, because it's still in the five yards. Mm -hmm. Pushed him and rerouted him. And the timing between the quarterback and the receiver just missing on some occasions. Mm -hmm. So that's a little small weapon teams may try to deploy against these small guys whenever they run zone. So if teams do it, but I know that that's something that was throwing off some of the timing on the routes. But Waddle is that guy, man. He's Mm -hmm. the future in his league. All right, yeah, we're gonna see about him because, uh, yeah, he remember last year he, he was uh, he was dogging Marlon Humphrey, uh, in that game, yeah. um, against the Dolphins last year. So hopefully, <laughs> it, uh, we won't have no repeat of that. Um, it'd be worse <laughs> now. This before the season started, uh, there were some rumors, uh, there were some trade rumors, um, about tight end Mike, uh, just get sick, yes, um, and they obviously didn't come to fruition. Uh, sometimes I think with that, and, and then, then the Dolphins, I know somebody came out and said, oh, well, we didn't have any intention of trading Mike Jasicki. A lot of times when coaches, owners say stuff like that, I just think yeah. they didn't get anything that they really wanted uh, for whatever the player was. But who knows? Uh, but how how was he? How was Mike Jasicki in the game last week? Who? <laughs> who? Was it that bad? It's not his fault, though. Uh. This ain't the offense for him. The, you know what I the man, the man got one target, <clears throat> one catch, for one yard, and that was a check down that should have went for twenty yards to the next level to a wide open um, Tyreek Hill coming across the middle. But we checked it down instead. Hmm. Um, 
this offense isn't for him, and I think they're doing him a great disservice. Everybody knows Mike Gusecki cannot block. Mm -hmm. He cannot block. But any team would love to have him as a threat, going uh, a Travis Kelce type threat. Travis Kelce can block though, you know. Yeah. But um, Mike Gusecki, we just need to come to the realization that he's not a tight end. He's a big bodied wide receiver <laughs> that you, if you deployed in the slot is going to be deadly in this league. He is amazing. And I'm, I mean, this guy, like he's supposed to be the perennial 1200 yard quote unquote tight end. But in this system where we run a lot of 22 personnel, um, it, these tight ends are blocking heavy. And they don't, and, and you got to be able to block in the system to get on the field and have playing time. The second string, Durham Smythe, got more snaps than him. Uh oh. And, and this is, I'm going to be honest, this is embarrassing. We franchise tagged him, bro. Right. Mm -hmm. You franchise tag a guy that you give one target, one catch. He doesn't belong in Miami anymore because he doesn't fit this system. They need to trade him ASAP, not just for us, but for us. We can get the most value we can now, but allow him to go be great somewhere. Don't sit him. I mean, what is his value going to be after a franchise tag and he puts up 300 yards this year? Mm -hmm. you, you're doing him a disservice. He's right. worth so much more. He is a he is an excellent weapon, bro. I know 15 teams in this league, their offense will be Im immediately upgraded if you had Mike Gusecki. But he doesn't fit in this. You got Tyreek and Water. You're trying to force feed all day. He doesn't fit in this. And when it comes to the Ravens, trust me when I tell you, I know for a fact an offer was made on Mike Kosecki last year. Um, and I'm and Chris Greer wanted to be greedy as he always does. He doesn't trade players unless he's definitely going to win the trade. <laughs> Baltimore is like, no, we're going to give you exactly what you're worth. But he would be excellent in Baltimore, bro. I'm oh, yeah. telling you, Lamar. Lamar would have that outlet because the pass could be a little too high, a little too low, a little too up front. He's the one-handed guy. He's just phenomenal, but it's embarrassing. We're making him look bad. Mm. So I, I I just hope that we trade him before the deadline for his sake, and we might as well get an asset instead of just letting him walk next year. Mm, that's, that's not cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It'd be best for both sides. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the last part of the offense that I wanted to get your take on uh, is how is um, the Dolphins' offensive line? Well, how were they last week? Because um, I know Ravens against the Jets, they got a lot of push. Um, that, mm -hmm. that defensive line, the pass rush, they got a lot of pressure. Got, got a lot of sacks, too, on Joe Flacco. And we know Joe Flacco, he's not th this mobile quarterback, anything like that. And he certainly is not going to be able to move like a, a Tua can move. But how was that Dolphins offensive line last week against New England? Subpar. We brought in Teron Armstead. Connor Williams was ranked the best center in the NFL after week one. Robert Hunt played well. But the issue we have on the O-line, half the O-line is good at pass blocking. The other half is bad. Half the line is good at run blocking. The other half is bad. We don't have that unit that are dominating in both facets. It's just sprinkles everywhere of what you can do. Um I mean, our left guard, man, he, even PFF rated him a 33 or something like that. He was just a train wreck in that game. There were a lot of pressures that happened in the game, but also Tua holding on to the ball in some cases. We try to get the ball out as quick as possible with our offense because mm -hmm. we're about yak. You know, hurry up and get it to the guy and let them do the work. Let them mm -hmm. get the yards after the catch. So, And look at, look at our formation. Sometimes we run a lot of two-man routes with max protection. So that can also cover up the um, deficiencies that um, plague our offensive line. Austin Jackson, our right tackle, who was pretty bad last year, came back this summer looking pretty solid. The first game back, the first game this year, he only got 14 snaps, and he didn't look great in them, and he got hurt. Then the second string guy got hurt, but he's okay. So we're dealing with some depth issues and starting issues at the right tackle as well. So I think the Ravens pass rush is going to give us fits. I mean, they're going to um, make it real tough on us um, Sunday. 
So I think that we're going to deploy a lot of that max protect to try to overcompensate. So the O-line, fair weather. I'm, I'm not giving us uh, anything above average. Okay. Okay. Now switching gears uh, to go to the other side of the ball on defense. Um, is it, is it Byron Jones who's on the pup? Or yeah. Is it, okay, yeah. Byron yeah. Jones. Okay. Um, so how, how was this uh, R- Dolphins defense just as a whole uh, and this, specifically their secondary? They didn't grade out well, but after watching the all 22, they were phenomenal, bro. <clears throat> they were fun. I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. I mean, the only thing you're going to be able to take advantage of are one-on-one matchups, like, mm. you know, and you got to win the 50-50 ball because our guys are glued, bro. Mm. Our guys are glued. I mean, I ain't seen no room out there in that secondary for Mac Jones um, because at first, everybody's going crazy that Mac Jones rated higher than Tua, and Mac Jones had like 100 less yards and everything, right? But when you watch the All-22, Mac Jones had nowhere to go, but he was making the right decision. Nobody's open, but I got the one-on-one on the feed. Let me go. You know, so um, I could see why he was graded higher because he didn't have no opportunities out there, bro. This secondary, and we got a kid, Kohu, that was moved up from the practice squad because we had some injuries in the secondary. Absolutely <clears throat> balled out, bro. Um, Brandon Jones, the safety, they were deploying him at the safety, at the line of scrimmage, small guy too, at the outside linebacker position, making plays all day. Our schematics was impressive. Hmm. Like, and you know, I don't give, I don't boost people up just to boost them up. I don't give us more credit without it actually being due unless I'm trolling and being a fan. Man, I was highly impressed with this defense. Now, Hmm. you the, the pass rush? Oh, no. Mm. No. Terrible. Terrible. We got, we, we just, for three years now, we have no organic pass rush. Only way we're getting at the quarterback is dialing up some type of level of blitz. You send three or four, it ain't no way we're going to touch a quarterback. It's, we are terrible with organic pass rush. But that's why we, <clears throat> that's why we scheme the way that we do. That's why you see that zero look. The zero look gives you an advantage. Even if, even if you don't send the zero and you back it out when the ball snap, right? Mm-hmm. What it does is, see, this is how we deploy it. This is why quarterbacks have a hard time with it. And I don't know why more teams don't do this, especially if you have the corners on the outside they can lock down. We'll put seven guys on the O-line, I mean on the D-line. You don't know who's coming, right? Mm-hmm. You got five or six blockers. Right. There's going to be a free guy. What our D line is told to what everybody is told to do is take a step forward and engage. Whoever isn't engaged is the free man, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. You go. And on every play, there's three guys that say, if I'm engaged, back out. So we'll have a free rusher every time in the zero. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Is, it, it is looks that like it? seven. It looks like seven is coming, but only four is going to come. But that free guy will be coming, and the guys that's designated on the play to not come, they are not going to come only if they're not engaged. So we will always have a free rusher to the quarterback. It's nothing an O-line can do about it, not unless you bring seven guys to max protect. There is <laughs> nothing absolutely you could do about it, and that guy is going to get there probably in less than, in less than a second. So it's really hard to defend for, I mean, to to beat for quarterbacks unless you got that big body receiver that can run those slants and box out the guy, those type of things and make plays. So um, the way we deploy it is is just excellent. And we got a lot of guys at the at the defensive line like Melvin Ingram mm-hmm. who's playing coverage. Mm-hmm. They back him out in the coverage and they're playing well. So it's going to be hard for Lamar. I'm going to tell you now. Now, is that how uh, Melvin Ingram got that recovered fumble last week for the touchdown? Was it on a uh, exactly. zero blitz? That was, no, no, no. This wasn't a zero blitz. This was Brandon Jones, our safety, mm-hmm. disguised at the linebacker position, the outside linebacker position. And right whenever, um, Matt, no, 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 you're right. It was a zero. So, um, cause Mac Jones was looking to the right, making his adjustments on how to beat the zero. Mm-hmm. And as he was turned right, Brandon Jones was creeping around to the end of the line. He hiked the ball, 
came unblocked. Everybody else backed out. Mac looking at where he wants to go, and he never even saw the guy and just got blasted. Mm. And Melvin Ingram picks it up and go in for the touchdown. It's going to be tough, bro. But what's going to have to happen? Lamar is going to have to literally make sure his inside guys go on like slants and the outside guys go on go routes. And at the end of the day, you're going to have to put some of them up to get us out of it. <laughs> we'll Ooh, see. Man. Can't wait, man. Can't we'll, wait. But, but here's the scary part about it. Byron Jones isn't out there. Mm -hmm, that's true. We do this when Byron Jones and Xavier and Howard are out there because we know that they're going to hold it down. Mm. The problem is he's not out there. We did it a little on Mac Jones. We didn't do it as much as you would think. Right. And matter of fact, we backed out of it almost 80% of the time with Mac Jones. We don't like running the zero when Byron Jones isn't on the field. So sense. we'll give you the look, but we don't like running it. So we run a lot more zone. So it'll be interesting because last year we ran it a lot on y'all. So I want to <laughs> yeah, see him. Yeah. And Boyer has something to prove that it wasn't just Flores. It was me. So hmm. Boyer might try to do it just to see if he can prove it. It's up to y'all if you can beat it. Yeah, it is. And, and I know that's what we're going to hear all game uh, about last year and the way that that mm -hmm. game went because it, it was ugly from start to finish. Um Last we're, question. We're just a better team. We're just a better <laughs> team. Sorry. <right. laughs> last question, because that game last year actually uh, made me, because I, I didn't know who he was until the game last year, and he became one of my favorite Dolphins players to actually watch. Um, how was Javon because, Holland? Mm -hmm. I knew that's who you were talking about. Yep. <laughs> the kids just, man. I mean, I don't know what to say, bro. We got our safety of the future, bro. <laughs> We got our safety of the future. That kid is everywhere. But now him, the pair of him and Brandon Jones. Mm. Brandon Jones was the low-key guy last year where Eric Rowe, the veteran, started ahead of him. Now Eric Rowe is the backup in his Brandon Jones year. Him and Brandon Jones are massive back. I know y'all know y'all know everything there is to know about having great safeties. Oh, yeah. Okay. Bro, we got ours now. Thank you. We got ours. Brandon Jones and um, Javon Holland, they're going to be the pair of the future. Holland, you already know Holland is exciting. Holland mm -hmm. out there making every play. First game, Brandon Jones was making more plays, but Holland was out there still doing his thing. Both of these guys are just amazing, man. Um, and remember what we went through. We had Mika Fitzpatrick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I forget, I forget about that a lot. We had Mika Fitzpatrick when, as a rookie, uh, um, he requested a trade. Yeah. <laughs> so we traded him. But thank Ooh. God we replaced him with Javon Holland. Oh, yeah. And I don't see the fall off. I know Mika's been in the league longer and has more success, but Holland should make a Pro Bowl this year if he um, does what he's supposed to do. Okay. Okay. All right. And with that being said, Ravens, Dolphins, this Sunday, 1 o'clock, M&T Bank Stadium. Score predictions. Who you think is going to win? I think Miami will blow the Ravens out. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm so serious. Um, I think it's important for us to blow the Ravens out. I think that the score will be 35 to 10. Ooh. I think wow. that we, we have to do everything we can to show Lamar Jackson why we're coming to get him next year. <laughs> um, and he already knows that he's going to be in Miami next year. Um, Y'all can live in denial all you want. Um, the deal is already done. Um, he's going to get the guarantee, every penny of the guarantee money he wants. So we're going to have to put on a show and show him, man. Mm. That's where I need to be. So <laughs> it is what it is, man. So 35 TM Miami, we're going to dominate, especially defensively. We'll dominate. And offensively, I think this will be a great game for Tua to make the Tua near say, told you so. Hmm. Then Buffalo next week, we'll be right back in. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. So, <laughs> uh, But no, Baltimore is a great team. I just think that your strengths – um we have a counter for it and your weaknesses we're going to attack. <laughs> so, and I don't see the strength that you all have this year. That's going to attack our weakness 
mm. outside of, and the only way that we don't do good in this game is to attack of our law. That's the only way. If y'all can destroy him, then my prediction is blown out the water. But that's the only chance you got to win is making life hard for him this weekend. The only chance is okay. making this offense do nothing because of him. And that's going to have to happen with your pass rush. It's the only way it's going to happen. All right. So your secondary ain't rush. stopping. Your secondary ain't stopping Waddle or Tyree from getting open out there. It's not going to happen, bro. Hey, we're going to see. One, one thing uh, that does concern me, Um, I know with Marlon Humphrey, uh, he struggles against those those smaller, quicker type wide receivers. Um, I mean, like we just talked about, he he was struggling with Jalen Waddle um, last year. Uh, and with Marcus Peters, if he does play this game, this will be his first game in over a year because he didn't mm. play at all last year because he, um, he got hurt in training shape. camp. <laughs> Don't worry. He going to remember what it's like after this one. Y'all going to get a great player in three, week three because he going to be reminded <laughs> this week, oh, yeah, yeah, I need to get back. No, but but uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I'm expecting it to be a lot closer. I think um, Ravens win by by two or three, two or three points. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a really close, stressful, uh, annoying type of game. Um, but I think Ravens pull it out uh, at the very end. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Should be a fun what score. One. What score you got? Uh, I do 25-22 like that. Um, 25 22 Dolphins. Okay, I get it. The, the, these games are always, these Ravens Dolphins games are always extra special to me, especially being being down here. Um, and mm -hmm. a lot of fam family that's Dolphins fans. So, um, this, uh, this is gonna Engraving be a Dolphin fan. Don't let him fool y'all. He a Dolphin fan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, 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 if my guy end up going there after this year. Then I'm gonna have two teams, but we'll see. Oh, hopefully that don't happen though. But we'll if, see how it goes. <laughs> if okay, keep living in delusion. You know, E Gravy, you know good as anybody else was about to go down. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna see, oh. man. We're gonna see. I'm, hey. I'm gonna need to make some calls or text to Bashadi and EDC and then tell them we gotta step it up. Oh man, gotta step they it not up. gonna give them that guaranteed money, and you know it. Mm. You know it. They ain't giving that man no 200 plus guarantee. Mm, well, we'll see. But man. we will. <laughs> we will. Oh, yeah. You know, Dol Dolphins, they'll do anything, man. I already know they, they, they would do whatever for Lamar. Y'all going to figure it out, bro. Y'all will figure it out I, with them. I, I hope so. I, I really do. I hope so. Because that would just make life as a Ravens will. fan a, a, a whole lot better with Lamar rather than without Lamar. But we'll see. We'll he see. To be in Baltimore. Business is business, man. But anyway, appreciate you coming on. And again, one more no time, let, 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 let everybody know where they can find you at. TD Fans Talk, home of the real Miami Dolphin fans, openly Lamar Jackson fans up for anybody, baby. Y'all come on, get your early seats. Um, get your early seats, baby. Y'all going to be excited with the Lamar Super Bowl next year in Miami. Baby. <laughs> Let's go. I appreciate you, though, bro. Thanks a lot, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. You already know, man. And again, all of his links to everything is Twitter, YouTube, and everything. It'll all be down below. In the description, the team keep it clean. Appreciate y'all watching this, and we out. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie. Shout out to Graven.